Ahoy hoy, I'm Planner Walk, and today I'm going to take a look at someone who believes that gravity is not a force. Now, it's not the type of person that you'd expect. They aren't a flat earther, but they're also not talking about Einstein's theory of relativity. That being said, a lot of his audience is probably flat earthers. Just take a look at this clip. Ball. Ball. I'm, I'm repeating the word ball for certain people out there. They don't want me to say that word. Ball. Sphere. <laughs> Guess who I'm talking about? Ball. So yeah, Flat Earthers like this guy. They just don't like him saying sphere or ball. So let's see what wisdom he can bless us with. Hey, considerations for weight. Oh, I have a consideration for weight. It's called, why don't you wait before you say something stupid so that you can actually think through it before you go ahead and say it. Wait, are we talking about the same type of weight? Now I've already made several videos defining weight. I've said that weight is not fixed. It's not fixed at all. I mean, weight is uh, location specific, it's medium specific, it's vector specific, it's magnitude specific, it's phase specific, it's coherency specific, and one last thing, number seven, which I'm not going to mention right now. Now he is correct when he says weight is not fixed. That does not mean that he's correct about everything else though. Somehow he has managed to both overcomplicate things and oversimplify things. That's one hell of an achievement. So how has he managed to oversimplify things? Well, he hasn't distinguished between apparent weight and actual weight, which are two different things. Apparent weight is how much something appears to weigh and actual weight is how much something actually weighs. Apparent weight can be influenced by other forces. So if I were to weigh myself when in water, and weigh myself when not in water, then I'd appear to weigh different amounts because of the buoyant force. Now, he overcomplicates things by saying all the different factors that he thinks has an impact on weight, except he could have just said that it's a result of all the forces acting on an object. And ironically, his overcomplication led to an oversimplification because he missed out on so many of the factors that do have an impact on how much you weigh, like mass. Let's just say that we had a blind person that, um, you know, couldn't see what you put in his hand to say how much it weighed. If I took a 50 pound object and put it in a blind person's hand, they'd be like, oh, that's really heavy, right? That's the case, isn't it? Now, this little neodymium iron boron magnet, um, which only weighs um, four, a little over four ounces. Okay, let's say it weighs four ounces. You know, what can we say? Using platonic logic and retroductive reasoning, so there's induction, deduction, and retroduction. Like, what's a really simple example of a retroduction versus induction versus deduction? Induction is like, well, where's the last place you saw the needle in a haystack? I saw it over there. Okay, we need to look over there. What about uh, induction? Well, it happens to be the case that it would accelerate so many uh, inches since it fell over there, and therefore we could deduce. Not much difference. Retroduction, like, well, a needle's made out of metal, and hay burns, so let's just light it all, and boom, there will be the needle right there. It's a very quick, expedient methodology that the Platonists use to arrive at facts. Okay, now I just have to nitpick this point. He said induction twice. Induction is like, well, where's the last place you saw the needle in a haystack? I saw it over there. Okay, we need to look over there. What about uh, induction? Well, it now another point, and I might be wrong on this, but it sounded like the example that he gave for retroductive reasoning was deductive reasoning. So basically he started with a general rule. Hay is flammable. If we burn the hay, then the hay will burn, leaving nothing but the needle and we'll know exactly where the needle is. That's deductive reasoning, right? So what can we say about weight that's logical and intelligent? Let's say we stuck a 50 pound rock in the blind guy's hand. Okay, 50 pounds, right? Let's have him place his hand over, uh, you know, a large sheet of steel. 50 pound rock? Oh, it's really heavy. It's 50 pounds. Hold this magnet in your hand. Wow, that's extremely heavy. That also weighs the same. Actually, you'd have to have your hand to be paper thin, but let's just say 30 pounds, since there'd be a distance inverse square law. 
there'd be a distance between the sheet of steel and uh, your hand and the magnet that it's in. I mean, you'd be trying to lift it, it'd be extremely heavy, right? Heavy. I thought weight had something to do with gravity. If we believe conventional science, weight has something to do with gravity, doesn't it? So yes, gravity does have something to do with weight. But it appears that not only is he confusing actual weight with apparent weight, he also seems to be taking classes from Anthony Riley and Quantum Eraser. So here's the thing, just because you can influence something's apparent weight using magnets, does not mean that gravity suddenly has no effect on an object's weight. And earlier in the video, you even said that there are multiple factors that contribute towards weight. Well, apparent weight is what we're actually talking about. But why can't gravity be one of those factors? Gravity is not an autonomous field modality. Oh hi, would you like some mayonnaise to go with that word salad? So I'll admit, I have no idea what the fuck he just said. But luckily, I do know someone that might be able to help me understand. AB Science, can you translate what he just said into English? Yeah, sure, buddy. Uh, that roughly translates to... I don't know what the fuck I am talking about, so I am just going to make shit up in order to sound smart. If we're actually able to change the nature of what something weighs... Because weight and uh, gravity are certainly not forces. They're one and the same thing, by the way. They're not forces, they're acceleration. Acceleration is the complete opposite of a force. The fuck did you just say? Acceleration is way the hell over here, force is way the hell over here. They're complete and total 180 degree opposites. Polar opposites. Okay! So it is clear that you haven't done basic high school physics. Newton's second law of motion states that if there are no forces acting upon an object, it will not accelerate. And force is literally defined as mass times acceleration. You know, F equals MA, that equation that anyone that's talking about physics should know. Force in motion, magnetism, the loss of inertia. Increasing acceleration, there's no force expelled in acceleration. He just said a whole lot of words. I don't necessarily think that they mean anything. AB Science, can you just... Can you just deal with this guy? I'm gonna go back to finishing my salad. Oh, do I have to? I've just watched his lecture series on magnetism. It was really painful. So yeah, he does like to use a lot of words. And no, they don't mean anything. Or what we conventionally call gravity, correct? Yes, it's undeniable. So I stick this little four pound magnet in some blind guy's hands and he says, wow, that's extremely heavy. I know, it's only four, inch, uh, four ounces. Well, what does that tell us? Well, obviously this only weighs four ounces if I hold it over dirt or this wood table, right? Yeah, well, what happens? You know, obviously it weighs four ounces here, weighs four ounces here. Oh my goodness, it hit the metal bracket underneath this table over here. Now it's extremely heavy. Okay, if you are going to present something, please can you make sure that nothing is obstructing what you are presenting. But once again, you are conflating weight with apparent weight. Now, weight is a force given by the product of mass and the acceleration due to gravity. Apparent weight is the sum of this force and other forces that may be acting on it. It is? No, no, that's, that's magnetic attraction. No, well... No, it's really hard to lift up. Uh, I'm being realistic here, by the way. Oh my god. That was incredibly heavy. Now it's not so heavy. But now it is heavy. Uh, it's so hard to lift it. No, that's magnetic attraction. Is it? Yes. Everything is electrical. The only thing that actually defines a goddamn magnet is field coherency. Hmm, I hope that you are referring to long-range ordering of magnetic moments. If you are, then please say that. If that isn't what you are on about, then you can fuck right off. Before this thing is turned into a magnet, it is nothing other than a, uh, a fired chunk of neodymium iron boron with a hexagonal lattice, which is chrome or nickel-plated. Now, this is a fine example of charlatanism. He is just saying big words to make himself sound impressive so his audience believe him. And as a refreshing change of pace, the words actually made sense. 
They were still wrong though. Strictly speaking, it is a tetragonal lattice with P42 MMM symmetry. I may have gotten the phrasing slightly wrong, I'm not a crystallographer. And I deal with materials which have negligible magnetocrystalline anisotropy, so I'm not 100% au fait with this kind of detail. The neodymium iron boron lattice does have some hexagonal shapes in its unit cell, but it is not a hexagonal lattice. Here is a unit cell in the hexagonal lattice. And here is the unit cell of a neodymium iron boron magnet. Very different. So what defines a magnet? Please do share. If we actually know what defines a magnet, field incommensurability, or FI... Incommensurability is a tough word. Incommensurability, no, that is not a tough word, and it is also very easy to explain. Incommensurability refers to the inability to compare two concepts due to a lack of a shared basis. It's like comparing apples to oranges. Apples and oranges are incommensurable. Or another example would be reality and whatever fucking nonsense you come out with. There is also a definition in mathematics where two numbers are said to be incommensurable if the ratio between the numbers is an irrational number. Every ancient Greek translator, too, has had a hard time translating incommensurability. I know exactly what the fuck incommensurability is. Yeah, I am not sure what a translator specializing in ancient Greek would have to do with that word. Of course, you think it's a Greek word. No, it's, it's, it's Latin. Considering you call yourself a Greek translator, I would imagine that you would be able to tell whether the word was actually fucking ancient Greek or Latin. Explaining it not so easy. Point non-specific incommensurability. Oh my god, that's a big word. Not to me it isn't. I mean, shit. Aren't we supposed to expand our minds and expand our vocabularies? Oh, okay, the arrogant little toad isn't going to explain what it means to you. I wonder why. Now, if you were thinking that it means that he doesn't know what the fuck he is talking about, so he is just going to make shit up in order to sound smart, then spot on. Try translating the word nous or logos from the ancient Greek into English. Impossible. Sure you can. No, you can't. You try, go try to translate the word nous or logos. Oh, fucking hell. Are we ever going to get just one minute where you don't say something stupid? Nous. This means intellect, intelligence, or good sense. can also be used as thought or reason. And as for logos, this means logic or reason. Other digital audio workstations are available, but let's move on after that terrible joke that only a small fraction of the audience will get. Or Aoristos Dias. I, took, I wrote an entire small book on just a translation of the enigma, enigmatic word Aoristos Dias. Two words, actually. Um, still very hard to explain to people. Incommensurability. It's because we perceive and conceptualize things as something different. Something separate and autonomous. Well, here's gravity here, and here's electricity here. Here's magnetism. No, all that shit is the same goddamn crap! Hmm. <laughs> Triggered much? If you believe that, then you're the same thing as a stupid little kid who thinks that steam is one thing, ice is another thing, and water you drink is another thing. It's like, no, little Susie, all that shit is water. It is? That stuff is hot. That stuff is, like, hard as a rock. No, it's all hydrous oxide. It's all a oxygen and hydrogen molecule. No, it's all the same stuff. It's all water. Yeah, the chemical composition of the things is the same, but the physics is really quite different. And it also doesn't support your point. You know, it still weighs four ounces if you put it over the dirt or, you know, wood. Yeah, do you know why? Because then we only have one object that has field coherence. I'm not able to induce... Induction? 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 Oh, I am going to have fun with this. I'm not able to induce field coherence in a piece of wood or the dirt, you know, or a bucket of water. You actually are to a certain degree. And it's the reason why light bends when it encounters a strong magnetic field, for example. Even light will bend underneath a magnetic field. There are plenty of examples of that out there in the scientific world, so don't even try to argue with me on that one. I got two of them right over here. They're called ferro cells. It's a patented device by my buddy, Tim. Don't even try to argue that shit with me. So your buddy Tim patented the ferro cell. 
he's a pretty bad buddy if he hasn't corrected you on this shit yet. Now, Tim Vanarelli invented the Ferrocell TM, and Ken is now claiming that this shows magnetic fields bending light. All the ferrocell shows is interesting diffraction patterns due to the ordering of a ferrofluid between two glass plates. And no, a magnetic field cannot directly bend light. However, what can happen is that a magnetic field changes the properties of a medium and thereby affect the refractive index of the material. So, what is weight then? Weight obviously has no meaning, meaning since... You know, obviously force is not involved, it's acceleration. Oh, fuck it, I'm done. Now, to be honest, the rest is just obnoxious word salad, and he doesn't really say anything to debunk. The issue is that he's not just saying things which are wrong, he is just using a lot of words which mean nothing. I'm surprised that he is not a flat earther. Thank you, Amy Science. It was just too many big words which sounded like they were supposed to mean something, but didn't mean anything. But if you want to see AB Science debunk this guy some more, make sure you go over to AB Science's channel and subscribe as he's going to be debunking Theoria's lecture series on magnetism. Also, make sure you stick around to the end because remember this part? Induction. 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 Oh, I am going to have fun with this. Yes, AB Science had a lot of fun with that. Kind of like when Conspiracy Cats has fun with Flat Earthers. But anyway, leave a like and subscribe if you liked that video. Leave a comment letting me know what videos you'd like me to tackle. As always, a big shout out to my $20 or more patrons. The Sun Express, What Jesus, Fight the Flat Earth, Holmes, Hugh Jars, MC Nutkin, Wolfie, Stringer News 1, Ash Panash, Curtis Reynolds, Curvy New Yorker, and Sisyphus. If you want to support me financially, you can do so on Patreon. Link will be in the description. But anyway, I will see you in the next video. Between you and me, thank you for watching. Induction, induction, induction. Induction, induction. Induction, induction. Induction, induction. Induction, induction. Induction, sphere, induction, ball, sphere, ball, induction, sphere, induction, ball, sphere, ball, induction, sphere, induction, ball, sphere, ball, induction, ball, induction, sphere, 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 sphere. Did you just say? Induction sphere, induction ball.